What is up guys, welcome to a new video. Today we're going to look at the best champions in 619 in every role and as always as well I'm going to be sticking timestamps down in the description for roles so you can skip to ones if you want to do it that way. Before we start remember there is still a giveaway on if you want to enter that and I'm also thinking of doing a Q&A for my birthday which is on Friday but it'll probably release on Thursday so it'd be awesome if you could all leave me some questions in the comments. Thumbs up the ones you want me to answer whether it's like what my day looks like now or how horrible growing up with Foxtrot was whatever you guys like. Now we normally always start these videos with the biggest changes and I think this patch is going to be in the jungle. It's not really like the two that have changed at the top as much I guess but there are so many good junglers right now it's insane. Basically like a set of 10 or something that dominate the rest like Evelyn, Nidalee, Wukong, Shaka, Elise, Lee Sin, Kha'Zix. Just a few examples like by far the most popular and successful at the moment in 619. Now junglers tend to have two jobs now though right engage and tank or kill stuff and so number two is going to be split into those two parts. Our engage and tank stuff is going to be Zack and sadly you can actually still kill stuff pretty easily especially if you build damage. Long range ganks and like engage means you can pick good fights but you're also the dive king like how most people at high elo actually win games on Zack so easily with him is they just dive dive dive. Basically you gank and you get ahead then you group and you dive from out of sight like over a wall or something like that from fog of war. Teams don't really group fast enough in the game like to match you so it means you can easily catch like three under a tower while the other two are farming side lanes or something you go into your passive after you've tanked in it's just really easy except maybe like an amumu i think you're probably the tankiest champion left that packs a serious punch as well graves is going to be the damage part for us and he's not really going to show up on stat websites as a high win rate most of the time because a lot of people play him and they do terribly your burst is ridiculous so you can easily one shot people your sustained damage is good as well plus actual like healing over the fight with lifesteal makes him super hard to kill it's really like lifesteal plus the armor and magic resist that he gets from his e like free stats right 120 by the way of each a rank 5 which is insane you can easily build full damage but still kind of be hard to kill that is the problem really you have like a good clear in the jungle ganks are decent team fighting is pretty good you're just very solid all around but personally if I was doing like a top 5 or something I'd have Graves at number 3 and Zack at number 2 just because Graves I think is harder to play anyway number 1 is going to be Skana and nope I'm really not kidding this guy is insane he's been floating around for a long time at the top but finally I think I can safely say he's number 1 you have an insane amount of damage or tanky you of stuns and generally just being like annoying as balls kind of like a singe to be honest there are two versions right now and that is why he's actually number one for me so there's like the damage carry warrior triforce sterics and stuff if you catch someone in your e stun then they're basically dead honestly your sheen burst is more than enough with all of that ad the other side is the tank carry so sin hulk triforce dead mans and stuff like that like still good damage but it's more sustained damage now not burst instead of the burst though you get to be super tanky being able to do both of these and adapt means like no matter what kind of player you actually are you can find a good fit for you whether you want to tank and engage or whether you want to kill stuff. It also means you can adapt to both if you're good at Skana, depending on the game, if you're ahead or behind, like what your team comp is like. Like personally, I'm not the best at Skana, so I go Cinderhulk. It's way more forgiving, and if you mess up, then you're probably not going to die for it, to be honest. Like early game is pretty meh, no matter what build you're going to go for. It's a lot like a Jinx, actually, I think. I don't know, like a speed up, a stun, the ultimate pull thingy, good clear, damage, shield, like pretty stacked kit, if you ask me. Now let's go to the mid lane. Next is pretty similar to the jungle. A lot of good stuff hanging around at the moment, but there are two that kind of stand out a bit more than the rest. Velkos is number two, for me at least, like never that popular. You can't really just pick up and play him, but he has everything you want though, like long range poke and a one shot combo. You can't really get close to him, and I think that's the big thing actually. You get near a Velkos and he'll knock you up, combo you, and you're dead. He has a good lane phase, a good team fight, but most effective early ish, like early half of the game, like I think that's where he really shines. Nobody really has an answer to your damage yet and can survive it. Like at least late game, there's more chance to dive onto him or eat his ult I guess and live as a tank. For me ranked is a bit of a crap fest and Velkos can actually carry even the worst teams from high range because he doesn't have to get close to the enemy team to actually kill them and that is a big thing. It's kind of like a no risk but high reward playstyle. And he is going to come back to be number one for me overall at every elo. I know I trigger people every time I talk about Annie like how easy she is but come on she is really easy to play and have an impact with. Someone like Yasuo Velkos even Ari maybe you have to aim your stuff and at least try to do something. Annie, you're going to press your R, Q, W, E, and Tibbers will do the rest for you. There's still a decent amount I think you can do on top of the basics, but it's just so easy to have an impact in the game and actually carry. While she is still strong, there's like a massive unfair advantage over every other mid laner because you don't really have to do that much to be as effective as the others. Your lane phase is kind of straightforward and strong though at the same time. Q to farm, mana back, good trades with the stun as well. They can't like follow it up at all. Like kills are really easy to set up. Like you poke until they're low enough for your ultimate combo. 
flash ults can always turn a fight and even from behind you can turn the game around with a good ultimate but you do have like low mobility and if you don't have flash like it can let you down a bit if you get caught you're kind of screwed and without flash you can't really make a big dick play either let's go to the top lane now this has been really turned into the land of like play whatever the hell you want i don't know if you guys have really noticed it too or not but if someone plays like a weird champion or a weird build it normally ends up top lane and semi working i'm not saying you should do that by the way it doesn't always work like don't blame me if you play vein top and get screwed probably actually by a number two spot which is darius it's hard to not put him up here when he's just so effective at crapping on people like you are a lane bully let's just point that out you get behind and you're gonna fall back on being a tank which is not exactly the best because you have no crowd control or anything like that it's not hard to get ahead though really like extended trades work because of your bleed burst ones work with abilities after six you combine both with your ultimate and you kill people like i guess you sustain at the beginning and then you kind of burst them down it's really hard to recover against a darius though and i think that's one of the biggest things for me you get behind and you're going to be dove a bunch all game without help there isn't really much you can do to be honest he gets tanky while still doing crazy amounts of damage at least with like a jax or something he builds damage so there's like a chance he messes up and you can punish him darius has a heal damage and high health so it kind of covers up all of that honestly and if he makes a mistake he's probably not going to die for it that is another thing though like any dumbass can play darius seriously like he has more to learn like how to actually win your lane fully and then what to do in team fights but pressing q to heal and r to ult isn't exactly that tough at first spot is only above darius really because you're effective behind or ahead and it's going to be riven kind of convenient right that her championship skin that's awesome by the way just re-released and she's probably the best top laner at the moment i see what you did there riot but seriously she's very strong and the thing i love most is watching a good riven player it's so satisfying watching someone who's fed their ass off all game but can still kill people by just outplaying and being better at their champion if you get ahead it is lights out stack damage kill people faster plus bigger shield and so slippery like they can never catch you if you get behind one big play can get you back pick up a few kills and you're back in the game like flash stun or flash knock up into ult can still work no matter what your score is by the way this is number one if you can actually play her so like semi riven main or like actually good at her or whatever like it's not for some random player playing her for the first time if you're good with riven then you can do so much work in a game and even though river mains can be complete dicks like by stereotype a lot of super good at the game and it's amazing to watch overall you can win basically any matchup high skill caps you're constantly improving and getting better at the champion more effective and you're actually effective when ahead or behind plus you always stand a chance of carrying so let's go to supports next and leave ad carry till last i don't think i've ever done that in a video of mine before but we did just do a top five ad carries now blitzcrank is our second spot this patch and probably the most aggressive support that you can actually play right now blitz rarely ever gets buffed on nerf because it's down to you like how effective he is miss hooks and you're going to be useless like hit them and you'll get kills most of the time and also there are very clear like pros and cons pros you get easy kills and you set stuff up cons when behind nowhere near as good only aggressive no real like defensive side of things and most effective by far in the lane phase right now though mage supports are back everywhere and they make super easy targets like problem normally is when focusing the support it actually takes too long to kill them so the enemy ad kills you while you focus the support with mages like sona or zyra or whatever combined with blitzcrank damage they die so fast and the enemy ad can't really do anything anyway plus we also have immobile ad carries everywhere which is the same deal really like very easy prey but actually it has to kind of be partly because of the ad's that pair up with blitzcrank now so like misfortune jinx Jin are the three most popular at the moment and they're all very good with blitz like misfortune just has insane damage to follow up jinx has the chompers to chain crowd control Jin has the burst and chain crowd control with your root but overall the game has just become way more aggressive early i think the ad's around him are better for him and it makes him much more effective even though he hasn't actually changed now the best support this patch is actually going to be janna and i really hate playing with her so for real for me, like for me to put her first is making me feel a little bit ill someone who could also be here i could have put her here does basically the same job i think but it's hard to ignore that janna is the most popular support like played the most and has the highest win rate at the moment your shields ad is more than people give credit for like you can go a bit more aggressive and to be honest janna can be really good the problem is a lot of janna players sit back and do nothing in the lane phase kind of like waiting for team fights or expecting to get carried thinking it's enough to just like shield and that's it and that's not really how support works if she stands up in the lane phase though tornadoes uses autos attracts attention then actually she can be a lot better in lane than people think you have your tornado to interrupt stuff your shield ultimate heal and not back like that all insane at keeping people alive and her kit is majorly stacked if you use it properly i might hate janna because of the plebs that play her and leave me 1v2 in the lane phase but i gotta admit that when played properly she is like the most insane support and has so much impact i guess if you think about annie right easy to have an impact hard to mess up janna is kind of the opposite in my opinion easy to 
to mess up and hard to have a proper impact. Saying that, she is probably the best support to just sit back and get carried by a team though, and unfortunately that is what a lot of Janna players do, and that is why I hate her. So finally, let's move on to our AD carries. Jin and Jinx are, in my opinion, tied for second if you're equally as good at them. Like, if you said to me, hey, I'm really good at Jin and I'm really good at Jinx, which is better, I'd probably tell you Jin, but Jinx is still really solid. That's not really how the game works though, and if you're just average at both, then Jinx is way easier, and that's why I'm gonna stick her at number two. It's really what we just said about Janna, actually. So Jin is an easy champion to mess up and do nothing on. Very skill shot based and experience on like when to go in with autos and when not to. Jinx is way easier. You just right click and you can legit win a game by just like right clicking. Just doing that. You barely have to work for it at all. The big thing is for Jinx right now, the first tower pressure early. So leave her alone with your tower and it's going to go. Like there's an extra first blood in her pocket from that with the extra gold and even closer to full build. Very easy to play like rockets and runins and crits will ruin a team fight. All you have to do really is not die and just stay in your form. You don't even have to swap between them that much. The ultimate damage is insane. That buff was not needed, but we all know the buff came because she's getting the Star Guardian legendary skin and it gets you a lot more slight kills now. Number one is going to be Misfortune then and honestly, I think she's actually in a tier above Jinx right now. I know it sounds weird, but Misfortune is so good. Lane phase is disgusting. You prep a minion at the back and you Q crit if they come close or they have to zone themselves and just miss out on farm. Either way, you're going to win that. She's very easy to play in the lane phase. Even if your support is pretty poo, you can still do a lot. Your ultimate damage is insane, especially later into the game. After playing her this patch though, I have to say her lane phase is just so easy to get ahead with your Q crits. Like you can do half of someone's health. Only Jin and Ezreal are actually doing well against her at the moment, I think. And that's because they don't have to get anywhere close, which is kind of stupid. A love tap can destroy towers and champions. That damage is crazy. Hard to play against actually in the lane phase because she'll run up to you, hit you once, run away and repeat for constant extra damage. I know not many people play her because she's not a traditional way to carry, but she is so amazingly strong right now and easy to abuse for some free low if you're looking to climb. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think. Leave your questions down below for tomorrow's video. Thank you for watching, but for now, let's go to the robots.